Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our debonair ideal segment for this evening. I'm very excited uh, about this segment. It's one that I've been planning in my head for a long time, uh, so pardon my like excitement. Will Cooper is still uh, here with me, and this is Everyday Carry Accessories for the Cigar Smoker. Now, admittedly, these don't directly relate to cigar smoking, but I, for those that don't know, like, I kind of, I have this, like, it's kind of like a, a thing. Like, I like tactical gear, Will, and I like, like, carrying stuff with me, like knives and, like, cool gadgets and stuff. It's kind of like part like my like sh going shooting into the range and, and doing a little bit of hunting and fishing combined with like a little bit of computer nerdism. Like, I don't know. We end up in this like tactical world and then I got into cigars and I kind of related. I, I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, yeah. but like I, I like stuff. I like cool stuff. And this was a way for me to talk about my cool stuff as it relates to um, cigar smoking. And the first one, Will... I couldn't find any direct correlation to cigar smoking other than when you use this product like I've used. And none of these manufacturers have any direct correlation to myself or the show. And if they do have any correlation, I will disclose that when I've gotten free product. Uh, I will indicate that. This is one that I bought. I did not get any free product from this company. But it helped me basically will like trim down what... I keep in my pocket. And I was one of those ones, if you ever see the, the Seinfeld episode where he's like having back problems and stuff because his wallet's so big and he's sitting crooked in the, in the seat. You remember that episode? Yeah. It's Costanza's got the, like, the big wallet with all the receipts in it. Like, dude, that was totally me. It was well, totally yeah. me. Yeah, and there was an episode of the Brady Bunch. I'm going back further where yeah. Bobby Brady basically empties his pockets on an episode and is like he takes out like aisle three of a supermarket and that that's like my pockets. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the uh, I carry a wallet from Trayvax and Trayvax is a really cool company. We have a picture of this product. Uh -huh. uh, this is a Trayvax Axis. I carry it in the the stainless. If you can switch to that image, I carry it in the stainless model. Um, this is forty four ninety nine. And for me, like you just need a good wallet and one that doesn't get in a way because I, it, being a cigar smoker, I carry more stuff, as you'll see, than your average person because I carry lighters and cutters and I carry two different cutters and a lighter and you might be carrying cigars with you. So this made it on my list for this segment because it helped me trim down my wallet. It's really small. You basically just put your credit cards in this thing and any kind of other credit card size thing like your license or whatever, and you can carry... They have different models. <laughs> you can carry up to, I want to say 10 or 12 or 14 max different cards in this will. <clears throat> and you can carry a certain number of bills before you can't close the thing. So it forces you never to keep receipts, never to put cigar bands in your wallet. You know, business cards go in your pocket and then there's a process for that. So it really helped me. Right just streamline um, what I was carrying with me. And um, the nice part is that different models have different ways to attach it to things. This has two different ways to attach it to things. I can attach it to my, my, <coughs> my key ring via carabiner. I can hang it up. <coughs> when I get home, actually, I hang it up on a hook so I don't forget my wallet. Because as cigar smokers, you got to remember to take... You know, take your cigars, take your cutter, take your lighter with you when you go. So uh, being able to hang your wallet up so you don't forget it, I thought was good. Um, and in just a general sense of being like debonair and not breaking out this like wallet that is like receipts spilling out and it's all like busted up like leather. 
like you know will you probably like me carried a wallet in your back pocket yeah for a long time and it's leather and it just gets beat to crap after a certain amount of time this thing is stainless steel it's not the most elegant thing but it's not going to ever look like beat up you know what i'm saying yeah. Um, so it's forty four ninety nine, uh, and it's from Travax, which I've had a great experience with it. I've been carrying it for, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> maybe six months, and I love it. it. It's a different way of thinking. Like you gotta shed what you think about wallets right now. And I know it's a debonair ideal, and I should be talking about the most gorgeous like leather wallet in the world, but I've gone through a lot of leather wallets, and I go back to the Travax well as as my favorite wallet. So I encourage people to try it. You know, the funny thing you said, and my wife said, she said, I must be the only person who has cigar bands and receipts, you know, yeah. lying around. And so now I know I'm not the only person with that. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> if I need to keep a receipt, like I'll keep a receipt in my pocket and like whatever, you know what right. I'm saying? <clears throat> um, okay. So I'll go by whatever the next image is queued up that I see by the production folks. Uh, thanks to our production folks. Uh, Mark, uh, Tyler, Absolutely. Tyler, and Riley, thank you very much, guys. Um, <laughs> this is the Calibri Boss, and this really hits to the cigar smoker. And by no way are we affiliated with Calibri. However, they did gift us uh, the lighter. They gifted us a bunch of cutters and lighters. And um, you saw Calibri come on the show when um, uh, Les, Les Man came on the show uh, and was talking about the different products. The one that stuck out for me, dude, was his Calibri Boss Cutter and Lighter. And I tell you what, there's a lot of things I like about this combination. The most resounding thing for me is I can take one thing, and you can't really see it in the picture, but the, the cutter folds into the lighter. There's actually grooves inside of the lighter. So it fits in your pocket like a lighter, but there's a cutter with it too. And for me, carrying one thing that is dual purpose cutter and lighter was huge for me. It's also a triple flame lighter that comes to a point. It's been super reliable for me. I've been using this since Les came on the show. What was it, eight or nine months ago, Will? Uh, about, yeah, I'd say it was around a year. Around yeah. that, right? Yeah. Yep. I've used it quite frequently since then. Had a great experience. Uh, I haven't had issues with it since then. And now it retails for $129, which is much higher than I thought. Um, it actually retailed for, and that was $129 from uh, an online retailer that was about $20 cheaper than a lot of other places. So it's between like $130 and $150 for this lighter cutter combination. It still gets my recommendation um, because it's an awesome lighter, and <clears throat> you can put it in your pocket, Will, and you don't have a cutter and a lighter like jiggling around in your pocket all day. So it's one thing that I just, you know what? I've said this is the lighter. I'm gonna in cutter. I'm just gonna put it in my pocket every day, and every day I just keep it in my pocket. Yeah, and I think I've told people. Is it in too, my pocket now? Yeah, It'd be I pretty carry. You know, it's not. So I don't know. Oh no, it's right here on the table. <laughs> so normally I just keep this right. It's blue. I get the blue one. It comes in different colors. But normally it's small enough. It's light enough. I just keep it in my pocket at all times. Well, that way I always have a cutter and a lighter. And yeah, I mean it sounds kind of simple, but. Um, I, I just, I like it. I think it's a really good thing. You know, and I think I've mentioned this. I always carry two lighters. And so now I have two lighters and a cutter. If I could get that down from three to two, because I'm still right. going to carry two lighters. I mean, it's just because basically if I don't have my butane lighter, it's like really bad. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so I just, like I said, my trip to Cuba was, was always, you know, just not, I didn't have a butane lighter until like day three. Right. So, well, no, yeah. what's interesting is, like, I'm using this lighter right here, which I really like. We've talked about these, Will. These are, like, $10 lighters from Amazon. This one's branded, like, a Scorchy. Right. But the thing, it doesn't have a cover on the top. Like, I could put this in my pocket, but, like, all kinds of dust and lint would get in there, and it would cause problems. Right. The thing I like about the Calibri Boss is it has that cover, which right. makes it a pocket-friendly uh, lighter. Now, it's a little expensive at $129, but I, 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 car I, I believe me. Trust me when I'm saying this, listeners and viewers. I've carried a lot of different cutters and lighters in my pockets over the years, and this is kind of the one that I've settled on. And that goes, you know, also with the um, uh, the um, wallet as well. Um, yeah. 
So right now, Mark's putting up the um, my pocket knife, and this one is very eccentric. That's a um, knife. I'll be I'll be honest with you. It, it this is um, this is a two hundred eighty three dollar pocket knife. Now, let me explain myself. First and foremost, the company Ratworks uh, sent it to me, and this is a Ratworks Mini. It's a company in Illinois. And they did send me the knife for review. They said, you can keep it as long as you talk about it on your show. I talked about it on the security show a, a while ago when I got it. It's been probably almost a year since I've had this uh, knife, Will. And I've carried probably over a dozen different pocket knives with me over the years. And <clears throat> this is hands down, like without even a question about it, it's an Oasis rating for a pocket knife. Like this and is the one. Wow. That anyway. I would carry, and I've carried Benchmade, I've carried uh, all kinds of different pocket knives uh, of really good quality, and nothing against those manufacturers. Benchmade makes a great knife. This one is my favorite. A um, couple things come to mind. Uh, one, when they sent it to me, they looked up the Rhode Island state law, which says it has to be, the blade can be an auto open. So this is an auto open push button and it opens a uh, knife. In fact, I have it right here in my, in my pocket. It's a chain driven auto open, which is really cool. And you can carry that legally in Rhode Island in your pocket at all times. So I don't have to worry about being not in compliance with the law, which I have a lot of friends in law enforcement and they would be very upset with me <laughs> if I was not abiding by the laws in Rhode Island, as would anyone in law enforcement. Uh, in this fine state, and it comes in at 2.99 inches, so it's under the legal requirement. They do that purposely for states other than Rhode Island that also have the law that says it has to be under three inches, and Rhode Island allows you to carry an auto open, provided it's under three inches, so they sent it to me. It's been rock solid. It's the perfect size and weight, um, and it's it's $283, Will. It's an expensive accessory, but... I'm going to tell you a little story about a cigar smoker friend of mine named Eric who was putting his pants on one day. And right before he was putting his pants on, his auto open knife opened without his knowledge. He pulled his pants up and received a 14-inch gash in his Ooh. calf. He sent me the picture. He put it on Facebook of what the picture looked like. It looked like you know, when you're filleting a fish. Yeah. Like that's what it looked like. And so that's when I was really glad that I had this because there's no – like when the blade is closed, Will, I can't – the blade doesn't move at all. Like there's no – I mean no play in the blade at all. And I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to carry something in my pocket, uh, I'm, it's going to be of good quality. And I've used this blade for about a year. It's got a, a chain, like a bike chain that opens and closes it. It's just the most reliable pocket knife. I really don't know how that relates to cigar smokers, but like I said – we tend to carry a lot of stuff with us. And if we're going to carry a pocket knife, um, it's the Ratworks MRX Mini. And it lists at $283. Again, this company did send this to me as a review item. I, I have used it a lot. And I, I would stand behind their product. They had given me no uh, anything else but this one knife. And I would speak volumes about the uh, integrity and quality of this company. They kind of like... Um, it's kind of like Boutique Cigars will. Like they... They sell firearms and knives, but they also have the knife manufacturers like make knives for them. Right. And this is one of the ones that like they worked with a manufacturer to make and brand of their own. And it's just the best knife I've ever carried in my entire life. So, so in other words, they there's a, there's, they don't have a factory, but they're right. doing distribution. They source it. Yeah, it's a right. great quality blade, like the whole right. the right. whole thing. So right. that that would be my recommendation. Again, very pricey, but given the story of our my good friend Eric. Um, God bless his soul. I <laughs> I felt so bad for him when that happened. Oh my um, goodness. Yeah, I, I I I if if they didn't gift it to me, Will, I would save my pennies and buy this knife outright. Um, and just make sure you don't lose it, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> as far as a phone case, I use uh now all of us have different phones, Will. Obviously, I'm a nerd, so I have a a a, ne a Google Nexus six P, right? I bought it outright, put a SIM card in it, um, and I run the, the latest Google um, and Android operating systems on it because it's not tied to a carrier. Um, I like Android as my phone OS, whatever your mileage might vary. My recommendation for cigar smokers, if you're going to get a, a phone in a case, Will, and this is really more about the case. This is a poetic revolution, Google ne uh, Nexus 6P case. Ashes are going to get on your phone, right? 
Yeah. I mean, you've had you've had ashes on your phone. I mean, just yeah. even if you leave it on your desk or you're taking pic or it's on your lap and you you're gonna ash in and around your phone. Right. And I think having a good quality glass screen protector is important. Also protects from smoke. Like I can I can really wipe that glass screen protector and I'm not um, damaging the screen itself. Also, this case protects the charging port. And I know I'm really retro and it's kind of a vintage thing, but I, I have a headphone port on this phone. I'm, I'm old school with mine. I know. We're old school. We're old school, but we have headphone ports uh, on yeah, our phones. Yeah. Uh, the new iPhone 7, of course, doesn't have a headphone jack, but this has protectors for that, um, which prevents, you know, ashes from getting in there or any kind of dirt or debris. And you like to have your phone to take pictures of your cigars, um, and you're going to have it in your cigar lounges where it's going to come in contact with ash. So um, just as a good general practice, I tend to drop my phones as well, Will. Um, I don't know if it's taking pictures of my cigars that forces it to drop more often than not, but... I always make sure I have my phone with me when I'm smoking so that I can take pictures of my cigar. I can take pictures of my smoking with my friends or whatever. Uh, so I like to have the protection of a case. Well, you know, we got to get a wonder, but it won't prevent Stogie Santa from losing. It, <clears throat> no, it doesn't. That we, um, make sure you have find my iPhone enabled. If you're an iOS or uh, in Google, you've enabled uh, the ability to remotely wipe your phone or locate your phone. Uh, in Google, both <laughs> manufacturers have that. This case, though, will was ten ninety nine, so it doesn't break. That's the a bank. great. That's a great price. It's a great case. price. Uh, yeah. I did. It did have a little like um, uh, thing on it that made it prop up as a stand. That doesn't work so well. I actually ripped that off today because I was tired of it, and it actually makes the case lighter. Um, so you might use your phone to like stream an episode of Stogie Geeks. Um, so this case, I wasn't a fan of the the kickstand, but uh, it's a good quality case, and it has even a little like. You saw it in the picture, like a little thing you can put it on a carabiner and stuff. It's a really rugged case. And at 1099, like I said, it doesn't uh, break the bank. The last thing on my list, Will, is uh, a Zycar. We don't have a picture of this one, but I think everyone knows what this is. It's a Zycar MTX Multi 2 at 5499 MSRP. You probably find this online at your local cigar shop uh, at varying prices. It is a $55 essentially MSRP. I keep one, I don't have my keys on me, but I keep one on my keychain all the time. Our listeners are most likely familiar with it. We call them the Zycar scissors, right? And one of the reasons I keep this with me, Will, not even so much to cut my cigars with, but it has that little tool to let you bleed your lighters. Must have. It, we don't and, talk about uh, that. We, you yeah, need that. and like you don't want to... Now, the lighter that I like to carry is $129. I'm not jamming like... And just anything in there to bleed the lighter because I don't want to mess up the lighter and the way you fill it. So for me, <clears throat> these uh, mul this multi-tool from Zycar, small enough you can keep it on your key ring. That way you always have a cutter. And more importantly, you always have a way to bleed your lighter. Very and important. So that's yeah. my recommendation. Because I'm, I'm using pens and I've exploded pens doing that and ruined lighters too. It's, it's ugly. It's ugly. Yeah, that's a very important thing. So I, I don't know, Will, if you have anything to add to that, but that's – I've put it obviously way more thought than the average person has into what they carry on you as a person. Um, we could – so much so we could do a follow-on segment that talks about which uh, multi-tool. I carry a Leatherman multi-tool with me. I usually carry a flashlight with me as well in some capacity. We could probably do a follow-on segment as to what, what you carry with you. Um, but those are kind of the basics for me. I never leave home without those things. So there's a company that I've done some accessory reviews for on Cigar Coop. It's called Screw Pop. Mm -hmm. um, and they make a lot of <laughs> stuff that's designed to uh, go in your pocket. They make, um, in particular, they make some really good bullet, bullet cut punch, uh, punch, mm -hmm. punch cutters. Again, and I use those. I put my key on there. And I don't, I don't like big, bulky key rings. But again, when I have this thing, I'm, I'm able to have a punch with me. Right. With it. So again, it's one less thing in my pocket. So... Uh, Screw Pop has a lot of interest. They they make they're just getting into the cigar accessories thing, but they make a lot of other accessories, uh, pockets, uh, tools, and things like that. So, and most of the stuff I've had is pretty good from them. So I definitely would encourage checking out Screw Pop as well. Nice. Yep. All right, let's do our unbanded three o two. Will w one comment before we do? Yeah. Boy, the chat room is going nuts tonight. I haven't. Uh, I've been. I was delivering the segment, so I wasn't paying attention to the chat. Yeah, room. I mean, well, they're playing ass grabby grabby. Uh, you know. Nice. So the ass press. Something with ass pressing came up as well. Uh, we got <laughs> Crux, Steve. It's really good. It's nice. RV pipes. Really good chat room. I'm sorry if I'm nice. leaving anyone out. Good That's night awesome. tonight. 
Yep. So let's get into this one. Yeah. Um. So this. I have to say, a- Will. Uh, I, I want to say this before we start. You, your son's been doing a fantastic job. Is it Timmy? Timmy, right? Yep. I call him Timmy. Yep. We call him Timmy. He, yep. yep uh, as well. Timmy, you're doing a great job. I and I've because I've thoroughly enjoyed the un- and not that Keith and Brenda would were it was just a, a, a different cigars that we have access to when different people provide us the unbanded's and I've really enjoyed both unbanded's well. Well, he's and, and you know he, I, I I'm not making he is new to the cigar business, but um he when he's done this when he got those that day he was working solo in the store mm-hmm. so he did not have any help doing this nor did it had any guidance from me um, even though I did get last week's correct. And I believe I can get this week's correct as well. But we'll see about <laughs> Interesting. that. Interesting. Yeah. I don't have – hopefully you have your envelope. I have my envelope in the other I, room. I have the envelope, yes. That's why we um, double up on the envelopes. Do we, do we have the picture of the cigar? We do. We took a picture of it today in the light box here in the Villager North American Studios. Let's put that picture up of what uh, this cigar is. <clears throat> well, I, I like this cigar. Um, I, I liked it, it a lot. I, now, it's little. the picture's <laughs> got a little more light on it. That's much more of a rich chocolate Maduro wrapper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought that it was a great cigar. It was very clean tasting. It had good flavor. Um, I had to relight it a little bit, but I was kind of milling around here in the studio, you know what I'm saying, Um, when I was smoking it. But I would regularly take breaks, and I would stop, and I'd sit, and I'd I'd pay attention at different points in the cigar. And I, I don't say that I could, like, pinpoint the flavors, but... This was a very flavorful, flavorful cigar. I thought it had a nice spice to it. It wasn't definitely a spice component to it, but it was a well balanced spice for me, right? Like it wasn't like sometimes spice. You're like, yeah, it's there, but like I really have to pay attention to it and retrohale it and like really think about it. And sometimes spice is like when you retrohale it, like your eyes start to water and you have that reaction, like you just ate something really spicy. <clears throat> this was a good balanced spice in the cigar. And really complemented the flavors. Um, uh, just kind of clean. I would say almost Nicaraguan kind of flavors for me, Will. Um, I was go- either going Nicaraguan or Honduran, but I am going to lean Nicaraguan based on, you know, just a few mm. things. It um, it definitely had that earthiness to it, but it wasn't that Honduran dry dry earthiness. Mm-hmm. So with the Honduran earthiness, yeah. it tends to dry my palate a lot. It did it have had- an earthiness component. It was more like a Nicaraguan earthiness. Earth, right. It was the spice was at that classic back of the tongue um, or back of the throat, I should say, and it didn't have that long. It had a clean finish, so it didn't linger afterwards, and I felt like I needed to, you know, reset my palate. Um, <clears throat> I, I got a little bit of that. I got a little bit of that chocolate component. Now I thought it was in the medium to medium plus range. This yep, cigar. you're right on. Um, and I thought it was a yeah. So I mean, and mm-hmm. it was a Toro. It was probably fifty to fifty two is what I'm guessing with that. Yeah, it was like a six by fifty or six by fifty two. Yep. <coughs> I mean, not much more to say about <clears throat> about this one yep. for me. Do you have any guesses? I mean, <clears throat> being that size and that profile, Will, I mean, it could be anything. What kind of wrapper did you think was on it? That's interesting. <laughs> um, I don't think it was broad. Broadleaf has some more pronounced. Bro- broadleaf has some more pronounced flavors. So I can eliminate that uh, category. Um, I would say it's probably some kind of Habano style wrapper. It didn't. It didn't seem like Ecuadorian. It didn't have that like depth of character where it was Ecuadorian yeah. with some Nicaraguan. I Maybe mean, maybe it was, but um, to me, it tasted like a, a Habano, Nicaraguan Habano. So, so yeah, I mean, to me, it did. But I had smoked a cigar a few weeks ago similar to this cigar. Mm-hmm. Um, that had a Mexican wrapper, and I'm guessing it was that similar cigar. Interesting. You see, it didn't have a Mexican San Andreas feel to me, but it, but I that's could be off. It, yep, yeah, it and this, it was, uh, yeah. So my guess, I'm gonna guess the Hoya Black by Hoya de Nicaragua, and that's a shot in the dark. Mm. Um, yeah. But I had smoked that after the show, and that was the thing it reminded me most of. Mm. But it didn't have that Mexican, and that Hoya Black doesn't have that. It it was a Mexican wrapper that didn't taste Mexican. Right. Right. Yeah. Should I? Yeah, let's just do the honors, Will. 302. Drum roll, please. No, I'm wrong. Wow. Wow. We're, this was a really. Casada Keg. 
Oh, wow. Wow, did that cigar really come along? <clears throat> That's really good. Yeah, I've smoked different ones of the Quesada keg. Wow. I smoked that little one, this right? The, the short Robusto. Yeah, yeah, this smoked very different from that wow, other size. This, has, this is one that had some age on it. Um, and um, I'm, I would have never guessed that. Now, that is made in Nicaragua. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's made at Placencia in Nicaragua. But it's you know it's a it's a Casada cigar it's it's Dominican so the blend components on this and I'm pulling it up right now okay. it is Nicaraguan in the guts but it has Pennsylvania broadleaf Pennsylvania would, broadleaf that would be why we yeah yeah I would have never guessed because sometimes in Pennsylvania broadleaf I get that mineralness too I did not Mm-mm. this cigar in that really came along well it did yeah I have not smoked the Casada keg in this size. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, my rating on this will, I mean, even before you made the reveal, um, was a solid fiver. I, I, ha- I, was, I was going fiver to box split. Yeah, it's somewhere between, between fiver and box split. Yeah, I yeah. kind of feel the same way about that. Yeah, I, uh, I, that was impressive. That was, it was a good cigar. Yeah. That's a very, like I said, it had, it's, this is the 16 one. So this had some age, you know, and these came out like in the, uh, right before St. Patrick's Day. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> good job, Timmy. Yeah, good job. Two, two for two. So, wow, that that didn't I didn't expect would never have expected that. All right. So before you think <clears throat> I knew this, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, because yeah, last week you were spot on. Well, last week, yeah. I mean, last week I it just it was the visual that gave it away for me. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, the visual can yes. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> All righty. Well, let's take a short break. We're gonna come back with our stogies of the week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Okay. <laughs> 